In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to take the model of the Magic Beans coffee sign, and we're going to walk you through the process of creating the different toolpaths in order to cut the finished sign that you see on the screen. To get started now, we're going to go to File, Close. So let's start now by opening an existing file, and from the Magic Beans coffee sign project folder, we're going to open the Magic Beans coffee sign 3D modeling file where we left off in the modeling tutorial. Okay, so there's our model represented in the 2D view here, and we'll use this option here to tile our windows vertically, and that way we'll be able to see the 3D view here on the right and the 2D view on the left side by side. So we're going to look at machining this sign as efficiently as we can. So luckily for us, our sign is fairly flat, and we're going to look at using flat stock material. And so the only area that we'd need to be looking at 3D machining would be the border of the sign, as well as the two recessed areas that we have over here. Now what happens when we 3D machine anything is that the centre of the tool cuts up to the vector boundary. So in the example of our border, if we just zoom into the vector borders here, Okay, so we're going to be machining between these two vectors here, as that's the only part that's actually 3D. We don't need to machine onto this area, as this is flat. This will be the top surface of our material. Okay, so the centre of the tool will be machining up to this vector, and in terms of this area, we don't need to worry about that, because we've got a flat top. Now, as the tool is rastering back and forth, working its way to the edge of the sign, as it gets to the edge, to this vector here, the centre of the tool is going to follow along this line. And so we'll find that we're not actually cutting all the way down the side of our model. We can overcome this by creating an offset, just to bring this out a little so that the tool can roll past the edge of the part and cut down at the side of our sign. So to do that, we're going to take this vector and we'll just use this option in the view toolbar to zoom active view to drawing limits. We'll put the 3D view back in Z and with that vector selected, we're going to go over to the offset tool under offset and layout. And in this case, we're going to offset the vectors outwards and by 0.15 of an inch. So a little bit larger than the radius of the tool that we're going to use. We don't want to be creating sharp offset corners in this case, we can leave that unchecked and then we can just click offset at the bottom of the form. Okay, so now we can close out and we can see that our vector has been created there. So now we're going to use this vector here and this vector and we're going to machine everything in between and by creating that offset there, we're actually allowing the tool to cut down the side of our sign. Okay, so now we can put the 2D view back in full view and now we have everything ready, we can look at starting to create our toolpaths. So let's switch over from the drawing tab over to our toolpaths tab. And the first thing that we need to do is set up our material according to how we're going to set up the material on our CNC machine. And in this case, we're going to be working with one inch thick material. Our XY dating position is going to be in the lower left hand corner. And you'll see that the X0, Y0 origin has been moved down here. We're going to set the Z0 from the material surface, and then we need to set the model position in material. Now, as I said, because we're working with flat material, we're going to make sure that we push this model all the way up to the top of our material, which we can see indicated here. And the gap above the model is showing here as zero. So we know that the model is right at the top of the surface of the material. Then we check over the rapid Z gaps above our material, making sure that the clearance and plunge settings are safe and appropriate for your setup, and also your home and start position. So in this case, I've got the X set at zero and the Y set at zero, and I'm going to change the Z gap above material to 0.5. And with that done, we can go ahead and press OK. So the first toolpath that we're going to look at creating is a 2D profile toolpath. And we're going to use this toolpath to machine the hanging holes for our sign. And the first thing that we need to do is select the vector. So we're going to select this vector here with a left click and then holding down shift, we're also going to select this vector here. So now they're both selected and we're going to set a start depth of zero. So we're starting from the surface of the material and we're going to be cutting all the way through the material. So if you don't know what that is, you can enter Z equals 
and the software will enter the material thickness as you've set it up in the material setup form. So that's just an easy shortcut for you to remember. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to need to do is look at selecting a tool. So we can use the select option here. And in this case, we're going to be selecting a quarter inch end mill. And we can look over the settings. They are fairly conservative for the type of material that we're cutting into. So I'm just going to select that. However, I do feel that we could look at maybe increasing our pass depth as we're only working with a small area. So I can afford to edit the pass depth for this particular tool by clicking edit, which will enable you to change the tool settings for this tool path only. And we've got all our parameters here, so we can afford to increase the pass depth here to a quarter of an inch. And then we can click OK to accept that. We're going to want to be cutting on the inside of these vectors to cut the holes out. So under machine vectors, we can choose inside left. And we don't need to worry about the rest of the form for now. So we can just come down and give this a name, which will be profile hanging holes. And we can click calculate. So we can see our tool path that it's going to take. So it's going to travel from our X0, Y0. And it's going to cut down in passes of a quarter of an inch. So that's four passes there until it cuts the part out. And then it's going to move on to the next hanging hole and complete the cut out there. Okay, so we can go ahead and preview that. And you'll see after that that we're left with a small amount of leftover material. But I don't think that's going to cause too much damage to the tool or the extraction system. So I'm just going to go ahead and we'll keep that as it is. And just for the purposes of the preview, we're going to double click on these areas just to delete the waste material in the center. And with that now done, we can close out to the preview. And now we're going to look at creating a 3D roughing toolpath for the border and for these recesses. Okay, so we're going to select the offset border that we created at the start of this tutorial. Hold down shift and we're also going to select this inner vector here. Still holding down shift, select the outer circle, the inner circle, and then also the circle that represents the central motif here. And with all those vectors now selected, we can come over under toolpath operations. And on the third row down here, we can select our roughing toolpath. So first things first, we're going to need to assign a tool. So again, we'll click select. And in this case, we're going to be using a quarter inch end mill. So we'll pick that from the list, check over the settings and click select to accept that. And also if we wanted to make changes to this tool, just to apply to this tool path only, then we can click the edit option and change any of these settings and it won't apply to the save tool in the database. Next up, we need to select our machining limit boundary. So we're going to be using the selected vectors for our machining limit boundary because we're going to be machining everything in between these vectors. And we're going to have a boundary offset of zero. So remember we already created the boundary offset by offsetting the outer vector so that the tool can roll down and then everywhere else is either flat or a negative shape. So we needn't worry about an offset there. Next in the list, we'll move down to machine and allowance, which in this case is 0 0.03 of an inch. And that's just to leave a skin of material on the surface after the 3D roughing toolpath has finished. And this just makes sure that we've got some material left for the finishing toolpath to cut. And it keeps that roughing tool away from the finished surface to make sure that it doesn't chip it. So the next option that we have within the form is the roughing strategy. And this is where we tell the software how we want to machine those 3D areas. We have two options, Z-Level and 3D Raster. And in this case, we're going to be using Z-Level strategy. So we'll be using 2D toolpaths to cut out the 3D parts. And there are further options within the form to control how we cut that strategy. For example, we have the order. So we've got two options, level by level and depth first. So level by level means that it will cut all the different areas to a fixed level or past depth of cut. So for example, we have the border, we have the recessed areas with the text, so the internal area with the text, and we have the dish itself. And so it could start at the border and it will machine the first past depth for that border. Move on to the recess and machine the first pass depth for the recessed areas and the text. 
then move into the dish and machine the first pass step for the dish, then move back to the border and machine the second pass and so on. And so by using this option, we're creating quite a bit of travel between the different regions as we move down in the pass depths. But the other option that we have is depth first. And this option will allow us to machine regions at a time. So for example, it could start with the dish and just machine everything out for the dish. Then move on to the recess and machine all pass steps of the recess. And then move on to machine everything for the border. So generally, this would be quicker as there's just less travel between each region. So we'll go with depth first in this case. We want to raster along X here so we can leave the raster angle at zero. And we're going to assign a profile pass to go last just to clean everything up. Okay, so moving on down, we're going to give our toolpath a name. So in this case, we're just going to call that 3D roughing. And then we can press calculate and that will calculate that for us. And then we can simply go in and preview the selected toolpath to see how that part looks. Okay, so that doesn't look too bad there. So we can safely go in now with a smaller tool and clear all this detail out with a finishing toolpath. So we can close out of the preview now and we're going to go over into the 3D finishing toolpath. And the first thing that we're going to do is select a tool. So you'll notice that a 16th inch ball nose has been pre-selected when we went into the form. So in this case, because we're going to be using an eighth inch, we'll click to remove that, that highlighted, and then we'll click select and pick eighth inch from the list. We can check over the settings just to make sure that they're safe and appropriate for our setup and click select. Machining limit boundary, we're going to again use the vectors that we currently have selected and we're going to use a boundary offset of zero. We do not need an offset here. And then we can move on to the strategy. So we have an offset strategy and this will start in the center and gradually work its way out towards the edges. And we also have a raster strategy and this will move backwards and forwards along an axis. So looking at the shape of the part here, we've got a border and then a series of circles in the center. So looking at the shape of it, I think the best fit for this is going to be the offset strategy. And it should give me a much better finish working from the center outwards than if we were to go backwards and forwards using the raster strategy. And then we can come down and we can give this a name. So we'll just call that 3D finish and then we can click calculate. Okay, so the software is just going to take a moment just to calculate that for us. Okay, so that's automatically opened the preview toolpaths and we can see our toolpaths in 3D view here. So if we go ahead now and preview those, we can see how that's going to cut the part out. And I'll just go ahead and add back in our hanging holes. And now this is really starting to take shape. So I'm liking the look of what we've got here. But if you felt that we didn't have enough detail, particularly in these areas between the text here, then we can go back into the finishing toolpath to alter the settings of the tool, maybe decrease the step over, or even changing the tool for a smaller one. But looking at that, I'm quite happy with the level of detail that we've pulled through here. So I'm satisfied with what we've got here now. So we can now look at moving on to the next part of our design. And to do that, we'll close out of the preview toolpaths form and we're gonna go over to the 2D view and we're going to select the magic beans text. So for this, we're going to use a V-carve toolpath. So we'll come back under toolpath operations and on the second row here, we'll enter into the form. And starting at the top, we're going to start with the start depth. So that's going to be from zero, so from the top surface. And moving down, we need to select a tool. So we use the select option to open up the tool database. Okay, so here we have a selection of V-bits but the one that I'm looking to use is a specialist sign making tool and it's a 120 degree angle, which as you can see, we don't have that in our list. So we're going to look at creating a new tool which we can add in. So we'll just check a couple of things first. So it will be appropriate for our hardwood material and for our desktop machine. And because I know that the 120 degree V-bit that I have has a shank of one and a quarter inch, we can use the 90 degree V-bit which has the same shank diameter here and we can look to copy the settings over, but then change the angle. So with that, we're going to use this option here to copy the selected tool with the 90 degree selected. And then over here, we're just going to change the angle here. So from 90 to 120. And you'll see that as I've typed that in, it's automatically updated the name of the tool here. And we're going to copy the settings from the 90 degree one and quarter inch V-bit. So we can press copy 
and that'll open up all of the parameters here. And we could look at changing those to the specs of the tool itself. But at a glance, these settings all look okay. So we can go ahead and click apply. And now once we've checked over these, just to make sure that they're safe and appropriate for our setup, we can select to choose that tool. And now we just need to come down and give this a name. So we'll just call this simply VCarve. And we can go ahead and click calculate. And you'll see the toolpath in the 3D view. And then we can go ahead and preview a simulation of that into our material. And that's looking great there. It's really filled that space nicely. So we can put that back in Z, close out of the form. And the next thing that we're going to look at here is a profile pass around the edge of our part. And that will simply just cut our part out of the material. So coming over to the 2D view again, I'm just going to zoom in with a scroll of the mouse. And we're going to select this vector here, which represents the outline. And then we're going to go over into the profile toolpath form. And so the start depth is going to be from the surface of the material, so at zero. Our cut depth will be through the material, so we can leave that at one inch. We didn't know what that was. We could enter Z equals on the keyboard, and that will give us our material thickness as set up in the material setup form. Then we can come down and choose a tool. So we can see we've already got a quarter inch end mill, which is actually what I'm looking to use. So we can click edit, just to check over the settings, just to make sure that they're safe and appropriate again. We can see we've got a pass depth of a quarter of an inch, which is fine for this. So it should cut that in four passes. So we can click OK. And you can see the passes listed there. And because this is a cutout profile, we're going to machine the vectors on the outside. So it's going to machine on the outside of this vector here. Next in the form, we can add some tabs if we wanted to, but in this case, let's just assume that we've got a system which holds down our part to the spoil board. And we don't really need to worry about the settings in the form here. So we can come down and we'll just call this simply profile and click calculate. And then we can preview that toolpath, maximize the 3D view. And there we can see now our profile cutout. So we can see we've got some waste material around the edges. We wanted to delete that just for the sake of the preview, just double click on that. And there we can now see our finished part. And that's looking fantastic. I'm really happy with how that's turned out. But if you did find that you were unhappy with some aspects of it, so maybe it's lacking detail in some areas, uh, then as I said earlier, go back into the toolpaths and change the parameters just until you're happy with the preview before you go to machine this. But in this case, I'd be really happy if the final cut turned out like this. So at this stage, we'd look to save out our toolpaths to send to the machine. And to learn how to do this, please refer to the dedicated toolpath saving guide tutorial that you can find in the related video section for this tutorial. And the only thing left to do here now is to save our project file. So we'll go up to file, save as, and in our project folder, we're going to call this Magic Beans Coffee Sign 3D Toolpaths. And then we can click Save. And we now have a copy of that just in case we need to access it at a later point.